everybody, and welcome to the 64th round of VVV Gaming's The Losers Bracket Podcast. Tons of information we're going to be covering today. PlayStation Network, still down. A bunch of information has been leaked out. We'll get to that in just a second. We're going to have our new Call of Duty sponsored team, VVV Fly Society, joining us as well. Lots of other subjects. Stay tuned. Biggest news this week so far, though, gotta be what's going on with PlayStation. This is getting out of hand. It's been basically a week since PlayStation Network has gone down. News has just come out that the people that did hack PlayStation Network potentially have customer information. This is uh, bad news bears the whole way around. Wouldn't you agree, Jerry? Well, having had the VVV site hacked and learning what it is to bring an outside security firm to conduct analysis, I totally get where PlayStation is, right? But to be fair, they've been a little bit slow in releasing information. Now, I get what the official story is. The official story is we had to pull somebody in and confirm. But to be fair, and I'm no expert, but I know that you can tell when your database has been downloaded. This is not rocket science. And I'm guaranteeing, like most hackers, what they do is they download your database. And when you get compromised like that in the, the never fully secure world of the Internet, you've got to suck it up. You've got to come out, say, look, I'm not sure the extent of the damage, but they got in. Assume the worst. Everybody pay attention to your bank accounts. Pay attention to what you're doing. Now, turning off the PlayStation Network was actually a really good decision because what it does allow is it'll, it allows people to not interact with the system anymore. That is good. It's good for data. It's good for security. I think they did the right thing. It's going to cost them a ton of money as well as, you know, it should. I, I hear this all the time. Protect your shit. You better change your shit. Make sure your shit is safe. If I asked any of you in here, what are you going to do? And I'm just being, you know, kind of playing devil's advocate here. But what really can you do? You can monitor your bank account. You can't change the credit card information that the hackers have. What you can do is you can cancel your credit card or your debit card and have them issued a new one. You can do that. Now, me, after getting hacked once, I do everything through PayPal. So all they have is PayPal, and I've already changed the password to the PayPal account. So that way... I never have to change my credit card. This is the advantage of using something like PayPal. This is why I use Google Mail, and I use an authenticator on my phone. So not only would you have to get my password, which is really complicated and nonsensical, but you would also have to have access to my personal cell phone and be on it at the time that you're hacking my account. I'm a big fan of authenticators. So these are the kind of security measures you should take. Gmail is a really good mail service for those that are wondering. And I want to make a public service announcement to those of you who have your parents' credit card on your PlayStation Network account and are afraid to tell them because your parents are going to be mad. If you think they're going to be mad now, wait to see how angry they are if something happens and there's an unauthorized withdrawal from their bank account. If your parents are living in la-la land, they are from overseas and never watch the news. They don't speak good English and are immigrants. These are my parents. Tell them now. They may yell at you. They may hate the inconvenience. They may scream in other languages. But they will never be as mad as they will be if there's an unauthorized access. Be safe. Don't take any chances. Let them know this is at risk. And again, what can they do? Monitor their bank account. Call right away and let people know. Call the banks. That's what I mean. The banks are the ones who can look at this. And what are So let's say you're like me and you don't want to change your bank account, your credit card. It's too much of a hassle. Call your bank, give it a spending cap. Say they can't, uh, I don't want any more withdrawals, no withdrawals in a daily amount more than $100 or $200. That way, if the hackers try to take something from your bank account, they'll hit that cap. You'll mitigate any damage they could do. And most banks, when you tell them that, will be aware if there's an unauthorized access. Don't allow internet transactions. There's another way to do that. Now, so we don't cause a panic here. Sony has not confirmed the credit card information has been taken. 
And I know that the VVV website does not store any credit card information. Even if you store it, there's a different database that's secure on a different part of the site. So that may be, it may be true that none of the credit card information was compromised or all they got was the last four digits of your card or the last four digits and the expiration date, but they probably never got the code on the back. So there's my advice. Take it or leave it. I will preface it by saying I am not an expert, but these are some of the things I know to be true, and this is my advice. So instead of telling everybody to protect their stuff, call the bank, limit the daily withdrawals, monitor your account, and otherwise just relax. Oh, really good advice, Jerry. No doubt about it. I have to ask one other question because Sony actually did make a pretty, I guess you could say, big announcement this past Tuesday about some new devices they're going to be bringing to the market, which is their new S1 and S2 tablets, like a tablet PC, but PlayStation certified can play PlayStation games on them. When they made this announcement, they made no mention of PlayStation Network and its current state. Do you think this was the right time for them to make an announcement like that? I mean, it's a pretty huge announcement to, to make in the midst of this, uh, this PSN crisis. Yeah, tough decision there. Should you have delayed the announcement? I mean, let's face facts. Sony has lofty goals. Let's talk about this announcement. For those of you that don't know, Sony has announced two new tablets. These are going to be competitors to the iPad, Okay. Sony wants to go after that market. There are a ton of iPad clones. I would say the only the one that comes in second place and a distant second place is Samsung's Galaxy Tab. And Samsung uh, runs on the Android system. Uh, the Galaxy Tab runs on the OS 2.2 uh, Froyo system. And I do believe the uh, Sony are slated for the next release of Google's Android, uh, the 3.0. And what Sony wants to do, which I think is really good, we've seen this with the Sony Ericsson phone, they want to take their PlayStation Network and they want PlayStation games to be playable on the Samsung, pardon me, the Sony S1 and S2. The S1 will be very much similar to the iPad or the Samsung Galaxy Tab. It'll be a traditional tablet. The S2 is really kind of a neat and interesting addition. It's much more like a book. It's got two parts, and when it closes, it kind of forms this burrito-looking thing. So you can open it up, and you can read it like a book, or you can actually push the two screens together, go more to the landscape mode, and it'll look like a traditional tablet. That, to me, looks like something really, really unique and different. And again, I think they're going after the tablet market, but I think they're also, with the S2, looking to go after the Kindle market. Now, Sony has an e-reader, but it has always been dominated, again, this space is dominated by the Amazon Kindle. So, But to to answer your question, do I think it's the right time? I think if I were going to make this kind of announcement, much like Sony, I would not talk about the PlayStation Network problems in the midst of this product. Uh, launch because to be fair, the product launch doesn't have anything to do with uh, with what really new technology is being put into the to their tablets. Also, on top of all this, Sony and SoCom were announcing a ladder with MLG. It's kind of hard to have this happen with the PSN down, don't you think, Jerry? Well, I appreciate you asking because I think it's obvious. You're right. I think that there's no way that. Um, you know, I don't know what the reset switch is going to be for this. It's certainly not MLG's fault, certainly not Sony's fault. You could argue their security could be better, but you don't know much about internet security then. Uh, better is a is a funny word in this space. But maybe this will be good in an odd way. Like maybe maybe people will have time. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out good or bad. It is what it is. As soon as PlayStation Network comes back up, I'm positive that MLG and Sony will relaunch the SOCOM 4 ladder and the tournament based on a stable and secure PlayStation Network. Speaking of this, though, another problem dealing with security, Roulette, didn't Exodus have a problem with GameStop, if you care to share that information? Yeah, so recently he turned in his Xbox, and he didn't wipe his uh, hard drive off because GameStop's supposed to do that when you turn it in there. They turned around and just flipped the Xbox and sold it to someone else. Someone had all his stuff on his hard drive, including his account, and just went on his account, purchased 6,000 Microsoft points, changed the gamer tag, 
and just went away with it, basically committing uh, identity theft. So, yeah, that's not very good for GameStop. Yeah, see, we're seeing now more than ever that the world is getting more complicated, and even retail associate-level employees have to have the proper training on what to do to prevent things like this. And obviously, it's an obvious oversight. Um, Hopefully, just like I settled with Comcast, Exodus will probably settle this out of court. You know, Comcast was very generous after making the mistake of allowing my Comcast email to get socially engineered. And, you know, they've, you know, definitely compensated me more than adequately. And I'm sure GameStop will do the same for Exodus because, it, you know, it's their fault. They have to take responsibility. And if they go to court, it'll only get messy. So, but for those of you out there who are going to trade in a 360, You're going to maybe just upgrade or get rid of a machine or get rid of a hard drive that has your account information on it. Make sure you delete that information. Make sure you tell them to delete it or even better do it yourself. All right. So I think we've beat up enough on the Internet security stuff. Jason, don't we have a couple special guests here tonight? Let's introduce the players. That is correct. We actually have two members of our brand new Call of Duty sponsor team that is VVV Fly Society joining us tonight. So we're going to learn a little bit about them. Let's welcome both Joel and Hamad to the show. That'd be Fusion and Regulate. Welcome, guys. Yo, what's up, guys, man? It's nice to be here on VVV, man. Yeah, it's an awesome awesome. feeling. It's really nerve-wracking at first, but it's really great. Yeah. Nerve-wracking. Do tell us (laughs) what makes it nerve-wracking. I am curious. Well, it's just everything you do at first is always nervous. Through practice, you get to learn stuff, and then that nervous symptoms just trying to kind of drift away. So right now, I am kind of nervous, but all in all, it's just fun. And it's just a new experience to be interviewed by a bunch of great people, a big organization. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. You flatter us, sir. You really do. But uh, welcome to the organization. We are glad to have you. For those who don't know about your team, tell us a little bit about it, uh, your roster, who you guys are made up of, and uh, what you guys have done, what you're planning to do. All right. Well, um, right now, the roster consists of myself, Regulate. I am the captain of the team, and um, Fusion, which is with us right now, um, his name is Hamad. Um, we got our other two members, Apathy, um, Brian, and Waff, which is Kelly, and our coach, which is George. We're looking to go to all the events right now, and um, so far we're looking amazing. We've been practicing. Um, we haven't been practicing a lot as we wanted to, you know, how the PSN has been down and everything. But we've gone, since everyone owns the Xbox, um, which is awesome. We've gone on Xbox and practiced there. I mean, it's a little bit different, and we don't want to play too much because then, you know, when the PSN comes back up, we have to get used to the controller and everything, pretty much do everything from the beginning, Like, and I don't want to do that. So we're just taking our days and kind of playing different games, which is what we don't do a lot. So we're taking kind of a little break off this PSN shutdown right now. Well, let's get to learn a little bit more about each of you, and I'm going to start with you, Fusion. Um, Hamad? I don't know, my background thinks of someone from Qatar, but that's only because I think the Sheikh Hamad bin Khalafial something or another, whatever his name is, Tani, is the ruler over there. But um, tell us a little bit about your background and also your gaming background. All right, well, I grew up in a country called Kuwait, which is a small country right next to Saudi Arabia. And I've lived there for eight years, which then I immigrated to the U.S. in 1999. We started to live in Chicago for at least a year, and then we moved to family disputes uh, over here to Washington, and I am currently here uh, living for at least 11 years, and it's, it's been a great experience so far. And my gaming experience, I've been gaming since 2003, ever since SOCOM 1 hit the scene. It used, uh, I played competitively when SOCOM Battles came out, so I've been playing SOCOM 1, joining top teams, starting from SOCOM 2, transitioning myself to SOCOM 3, which was a, a terrible game in my, in my opinion. Then I started getting into the Call of Duty scene where I placed professional. Then I took a little break when Modern Warfare 2 came out because I believe that's a terrible game. 
<clears throat> once Black Ops hit the scene, I started being aware that I need to get back into this. I need to become a top player once again, as I was in the past. So Mutation, a former MLG national uh, professional player, hit me up and said, hey, let's just start a team. But then what I dislike about the community was the sketchiness, people leaving teams. So I started being open to my options, hitting up various of different teams, trying to find a, a loyal player. And then I found Joel, a.k.a. Regulate. We were set to find two more loyal players, and I believe we found that right now with uh, Waff and Apathy being on our team. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. So, Hamad, let me ask this question. Um, Kuwait, uh, the language there I know is uh, Arabic, right? And I imagine since you grew up there, you're fluent in Arabic. Is that correct? Actually, I am not. My dad is Pakistani and my mom is Filipino. So my dad lived in Kuwait for 20 years, and he's the one that's actually fluent in Arabic. Um, I was only eight then I moved here in America. I know how to read Arabic, but I don't know how to talk at all. Um, if you hear it, can you understand some of it? Well, I can only understand if people are giving me gestures. <laughs> Other than that, no, sadly. Gotcha. Okay. I guess from a standpoint of education, you know, have, they probably in some ways uh, probably had some sense that they were going to immigrate to the U.S. So that, I guess English is what you learned at a young age? Yes, yes, yes. And my parents' main outlook was to move for a better education. That's what they always tell me, and they always preach me that. Awesome. All right. Moving along to you, Joel. Fusion, tell us about you. All right. Well, my name is Joel Monreal. I was born in Los Angeles, California. I'm 19 years old, and I've been playing competitively for uh, for a while now. Um, I am half Honduran and half Mexican. Currently, I am living in Hartford, Connecticut. I've been playing since SOCOM 2 competitively. I ended up playing um, on a bunch of good teams. I later switched on to the 360, played Gears 1 and 2. After that, I played Modern Warfare 2. I ended up making some pretty good teams with uh, a guy everyone may know, which is um, LVGTP. His team won the Dallas, this past Dallas. And I had the opportunity to team with them in the beginning, but for Black Ops, well, I was playing Reach. So um, after Reach, I ended up teaming with Fusion um, on a team called Mayhem. So Dallas came. Um, if anyone does not know, um, Fusion was not able to attend Dallas because his, um, his uncle passed away two weeks before. And he was able to go, but I told him, you know, he doesn't really have to. You know, it's, it's family issues. It's understandable. And um, so I told him, you know, I'd go get some um, – get as far as I could, get some pro points so when Columbus comes, um, we could be set. So after Dallas, um, we had our team already set. It was supposed to meet, um, be me, Fusion, Waff, and a guy named Historify, which was on my team for Dallas. So I let him go. We, we searched around for a couple days, and we found Apathy, which was on a team called Collapse. Um, he's a great player. He's a loyal player. He's been on one team for the whole Black Ops, and we're his second team. And... So far, we're doing pretty good in Black Ops. Right now, um, I really do believe going to Columbus, not cocky, um, that we can actually take this event if we are, are on our A game. And I believe so that we are going to be on our A game. All right. Thank you so much for that. So, yes, I got a chance to talk to all the players, and I think that uh, you guys have an air about you. You're calm, you're cool, you're collected. Um, tell us a little bit about your uh, coach, um, how you guys got hooked up with him, and uh, what you feel a good Call of Duty Black Ops coach does. Fusion, why don't you start us out? Well, coach motivates people um, to do their best. So, And I believe George has the ability to do that. But speaking from experience, I have none with him, and I, I believe Joel will be able to further tell you more about him since he's the one that went to Dallas and was able to interact with George, a.k.a. Ninjatic, our coach. All right, Regulate, you have the floor. Tell us. All right, well, it all goes back to Halo. Um, actually, George and I teamed up for Halo Reach for the past Dallas Nets. We did pretty well. We became real good friends. I told them that I'm going to start playing Black Ops if you want to coach our team. And to tell you the truth, when I went to Dallas, um, I did not believe that, you know, I never knew that he actually coached because the Halo coach and, you know, 
black ops coaching i mean a thousand be a little bit different but he was ready he had his little tablet he had a bunch of headsets you know if, no, if someone needed a headset boom he's right there it was cool he on his tablet he actually had um a couple of maps um that he searched up he had every single map he had all the call outs on the maps he had like all our strats because when we go over strats he goes in with us you know he writes it all down when we were down he motivated us and we got up and won there's actually a, a match that we were down on search it was we're losing three to two and he just told us you know keep your heads up um he was screaming out loud and we won four or three and it was an awesome match and you know if we if george wasn't wouldn't been there i really doubted that we would have won but yeah coaches really do matter and um i think george is the best coach that we could ask for awesome well that's really good to hear like i said you all interviewed really well and uh i really again want to welcome you to vv gaming and thank you so much for being on the losers bracket Thanks for having me, guys. It was an honor to be here, and um, I look forward to being in more podcasts. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. So, moving along from Black Ops, Jason, what do we have coming up next? (laughs) Oh, no. That sounds like it's VVV Titan. It must be time for StarCraft 2. VVV Titan, welcome back to the show. You and your creepy baby noises that you make. How have you been, buddy? Oh, I've been doing awesome, man. It's good to be back. I heard you took a little bit of a break. Yeah, you know, once in a while you get burnt out and you just need to, like, take some time off, get back into the game, get the mindset back, and go at it. All right, well, tell us, what is going on in the world of StarCraft? More like what isn't going on in the world of StarCraft. Jeez, man. It's like every week there's like some other new tournament or something going on. But uh, as far as VUV's going, I mean, we're in uh, two playoff things right now. One is um, the SGL playoffs where we're facing against MYM, also as Meet Your Makers. We're down um, 0-2 right now against third players, so uh, I play them tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be able to knock them out and we'll get a win. We're doing ESCA playoffs right now. It's against um, – we're in the loser's bracket, unfortunately. We lost to FXO going down to the ace match where it was Alege versus Chef, who has a beastly play style right now against Protoss. So, I mean, it was, a, it was a really tough match. We almost won, but almost got it. And then uh, we're in the loser's bracket, of course, against VT Gaming. And so we're probably going to beat them and move on from there. So that's the ESCA playoffs. And there's been a, uh, a new thing out in StarCraft II. It's patch 1.3.3 on the PTR, and it has some interesting patch notes where they're actually changing the warp gate timing for Protoss. And it's going to be really interesting to see how this turns out because with Protoss right now, you can do these four-gate warp r- four gate rushes, and they're just like the strongest thing in the world. And um, with this change, it's going to make it to where if you chrono boost a gateway, it's the same amount of time as building a units regularly as with the warp gate. So now it's going to give you a, um, a choice between making a regular gateway and a warp gate. So it's really going to change how the balance of the game goes. And aside from that, there's a major news that on the TSL3, which I'm just going to brag a little bit about it for here. The top four players, the two of the people who I picked to win are actually in the final four. I picked Koss and Naniwa to go to the finals, and then Koss win it. So, so Koss, Naniwa, Thorzane, and I can't remember the last player. Uh, oh, yeah, Hasu Ops. Very good Protoss from Europe. So that's what's going on in the TSL. Those four are going to be digging it out this weekend for, uh, I think it's like, $17,000 or something crazy and absurd. Oh, and of course, the biggest news for the VV community in the StarCraft 2 side is that Murder, our very own kick-ass Terran player who, if you don't know him, then who the heck are you? Like, this guy's so talented. He's decided that he is going to not go to school next semester and is going to go, as we put it, all in on StarCraft 2 and really, really try to be the best in the pro scene and really represent VV to its fullest. So I'm really excited to see how that goes. Yes, uh, we had talked about that in Dallas, and now it is official. Murder will not be going back to school. And after a long sort of period where you know, I even had to think about it, you know, we're really looking forward to help Murder and give him all the tools he needs to take his game to the very highest possible level that he can. Um, I always say it's not about the destination, it's about the journey, and I'm really excited that Murder is going to take this journey. I think that StarCraft too is the most important game to ever hit a North American competitive gaming scene. No offense to the 1.6 players or the Brood War players, but the timing, the technology, where we are today, I think this is amazing. 
all those things that you just said, Titan, sound awesome. Tell me a little bit about how you personally, though, to be fair, I know uh, in many ways the Protoss race has been a thorn in your side. How do you feel about these patch notes? Are you glad? Um, is that going to ease your uh, angst with the Protoss? <laughs> Always bring up the Protoss, man. Come on, leave me alone. But <laughs> seriously, though, I'm actually kind of afraid for these patch notes because it's going to bring back the two gate, which was ridiculously strong and it counters my play style, especially against Protoss. So, I mean, that's kind of scaring me. But in other news, my ZVP has gotten a lot better. I mean, I have been watching a lot of replays recently. I've changed and actually reverted to my old style to when ZVP was actually, like, my strongest and I could, like, never lose a game and I've reverted to that style. And it's working out really well with the metagame and how it is. So, I mean, eh, it's all good. That's what it is. It's all good, huh? So, uh, of our academy team, how do you feel they're progressing? Oh, man, they got, some, they got some really good players on that team, man. They got players on there that could actually be on the A team, no doubt. So, I mean, they, they look good. All right, so this is a shout-out to the VV Academy team. Somebody said, hey, will you mention us that we exist? So those of you who don't know, VV Gaming has an academy team. Our very own D-Way, who did I Thought Not Too Shabby in Dallas, come from our uh, academy team. Oh, yeah, man. He's a Zerg, too. Go Zerg! You've got so many problems. You know this, Tristan, don't you? Yeah, but hey, man, I'm who I am, and I'm happy with that. So tell me about uh, your break from StarCraft. What did you do to recharge your batteries? Pretty much I didn't play anything for about a week, and then the next week I played a bunch of Alien Swarm. For any of you that have played that game, it's like the greatest thing ever next to StarCraft 2. <laughs> it's a free game, too, and I'm like a boss at that. So, I mean, I played a bunch of that, really got into the FPS or third-person shooter mode, and then, you know, take a break from RTS because... Sorry, sorry all the FPS players, but you can be kind of brainless playing FPS and third-person shooter. We all need breaks. I'll jump into a role-playing game when I need to, uh, to escape from uh, a lot of tense situations. Uh, something slower, something with the story, something that's got a place to go to. We all need that, and that's the best part about being a competitive gamer, is you have a broad range of, uh, of games that serve different purposes to help us uh, cope Feel a sense of domination, whatever the case may be. All right. Well, thanks for that StarCraft II update, Tristan. And uh, we're glad to have you back. And uh, we'll look forward to see how those patch notes and uh, your new but old style treat you. Yeah. Yeah. It's treating me well so far. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back. And I'm sure I'll see you again. So now let's talk about my new favorite food, Gamer Group. So, uh, Jerry, you got some big news, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. I'm very, very pleased to announce that uh, we are now sponsored by Gamer Grub. We have started a partnership with them. You are going to see our sponsored teams and players enjoying Gamer Grub. Uh, we're going to build a lasting relationship, I hope. Keith, who is the owner and uh, product developer, the person who is the brains behind Gamer Grub, he's going to be in Chicago in May. So we're going to have some dinner and talk about some plans. But uh, so far, you know, we sort of signed and sealed the deal. And uh, now what we want to do, uh, well, the first thing we did, I think, which is really important, is before we signed it, we got all the products. Because everybody, anybody who knows me knows, you know, the reason I will never be, you know, sponsored by Razer is because I want the Mercedes-Benz of keyboard and mouse. I don't want, you know, a Chevy. And so it is, was Gamer Grub really a good product? You know, he told us peanut butter and jelly was his favorite, sort of the best-selling, and gave us a quick history and said, look, you know, this product will, it's easy to eat, it's clean, uh, you won't mess up your keyboard or your controller. He said that it was better than other snacks, and he said it tastes good. I didn't think any of it was true, I'm going to be honest with you. I was skeptical, very skeptical. So we got the products, we sat down, we looked at the nutrition labels, we started doing a comparison, and we ate it. You know, I ate barbecue, and other people did too, Doomhammer. I know Aridan from Argentina in our Rift Guild. We're going to talk about Rift later, actually, but uh, he ordered it. His favorite's barbecue. I think Doomhammer falls on uh, the PB&J side. Uh, and he kind of liked the pizza flavor too, because Doomhammer said that um, – when you have a lot of pizza-flavored products, you very rarely get the subtle taste of the marinara sauce, 
which really comes out in this game of grub. So, I mean, like, as far as food goes, it is really, really awesome. So after that, looking at the nutrition, checking out whether or not it would uh, not mess up my keyboard or my controller, we were sold. So if you are out there even remotely hesitant about Gamer Grub, you know, I really recommend you try it. Just get some. And to go back, Jason, you actually, when you guys were at the Midnight uh, Gaming Championship, that was, uh, you got a lot of Gamer Grub there, didn't you? We sure did. We actually had unlimited Gamer Grub there. They had cases upon cases. We were allowed to take as much as we wanted. It was awesome, especially mid-tournament because, you know, hey, we're all busy. We don't want to get our controllers dirty. You know, we grabbed a pouch. We opened it up. We got a little bit of our grub on. It was delicious. I'm really excited about this news. I have to say PB&J is my favorite flavor as well. I love the write-up that uh, – in the review that we had put up there, apparently, uh, according to Doomhammer, PB&J is uh, my specialty. Apparently, it's a large staple of my diet. So uh, shout out to Doomhammer for that uh, remark he threw in there. I like it. But uh, yeah, it's delicious product. I am uh, very excited about this new sponsorship. This is uh, the start of a beautiful relationship, I do believe. Yeah, I really like the PB&J too. And it, now I think that Keith is officially on my hug list. So uh, you better watch out. I'm, I'm going to warn him. I will definitely warn him. Um, but yeah, everybody knows we will not ever accept a sponsor that I cannot 100% agree with. And um, in this case, I am very comfortable telling you, if you have not tried Gamer Grub, if you are an old school player and you remember Gamer Grub and Mob Gaming and you disliked Mob Gaming and you disliked Vinny and that whole scene, uh, don't let that tarnish you. Gamer Grub is a young, progressive company, a lot of good ideas. Keith uh, comes from a long history of product development, a smart guy. I, I can't say this enough. Give it a chance. And personally, I really like the s'mores. And Doomhammer wrote up that I thought it was an improvement on s'mores, but I'm going to let that go. I'll put it to you like this. We got a whole bunch of packs, and s'mores is already down to one. So s'mores, good. Gamer Grub, get it. And if you have any questions, check out the site. It's above the shout box. In our sponsorship announcement, you in there, we went and we looked at the nutrition labels. We did all the homework for you, so you get the facts. So take a look at it. All right. I promised that we would talk about Rift, and I think I'm going to talk about that now. Let me start by saying that we actually discovered something interesting. Jason, you want to share the news? Definitely, Jerry. Have you seen the Guild First leaderboard on the Rift website? Well, I'd be lying if I said no. But since you mention it, uh, yes, I have. And why don't you tell us what it says? It's pretty neat. It says that we are second overall in the world for uh, obtaining firsts, world firsts. Currently 136 world firsts attributed to our guild. Pretty cool. We actually also have the best amount of shard firsts for our server. With Briarcliff being the biggest server, this is pretty huge news. Got to give a shout-out to the VV Gaming Rift Guild. This is uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, um, when it comes to, to MMOs, you really have to compare it server by server because some servers are really dominated by one side. Some servers are kind of what we call Care Bear servers. Uh, people PvE all the time, and they don't do any PvP, and there's no real challenges. Well, Briarcliff is the place for PvP. We go where the action is. We go where it's going to be challenging, and we are on the underdog side. And, uh, you know, we are second for world firsts on our server. We are number one for server firsts. We are number two for named NPC kills on our server. We are number one for item firsts, getting item drops. And we are also, and I'm, which I'm also very proud of, we're number one for quest firsts and also for artifact finding. Uh, we have a great member in our guild. His name is Drin. He is from Australia. And Drin is an encyclopedia of all things Rift. If you are on our Mumble channel and you see Drin, he is probably one of the most brilliant uh, MMO players that I know. He is dedicated, consistent, um, a team player to the core, 
unselfish, thoughtful, comes with a lot of experience, and uh, we are happy to have him. And I guarantee you we would not be first in artifacts if it were not for Dren. He is a machine. So a lot of people asked how good is VV's Rift Guild. Well, the numbers don't lie. Um, we're very proud of him, and uh, you know I'm happy to get a chance to play with him. We do need to mention that next week on May the 3rd, Tickets do go on sale for MLG Columbus. So if you'll be heading out to Columbus, make sure to pick up your tickets next week. Additionally, registration is open for PAX Prime 2011. So those tickets are on sale. Remember, that event will be coming up August 26th to 28th. Additionally, afterwards, we do have Devastation Event 2011 coming up. That'll be October 7th through the 9th. Remember, still got that early bird special going on there. That is the weekend before MLG Orlando. So make sure to plan accordingly. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to all the events. I'm going to be at Columbus. I'm going to be at Devastation. And uh, with promises of uh, liquor and fun times, you may find me at PAX Prime this year too. Um, So, yeah, I want to thank our guests tonight, uh, VV Titan. VV Regulate, and VV Fusion. Indeed, Jerry. Big shout-out to the guests that we had on the show tonight. Additional shout-outs have to go to the VV sponsors. Our new sponsor, Gamer Grub, Steel Series, Control Freak, MusicSkins.com, GamerLogos.net, and of course, last but definitely not least, Custom Inc. Additional shout-outs as well to the VV community. Your feedback and support is what makes this show what it is. Thank you so much. Be sure to stop by our podcast homepage. The website is vvvgaming.podbean.com. You can also find our shows on iTunes. Just search for VVV Gaming. Subscribe to us there. That way you can follow both of our shows, Directional Influence, our Smash Brothers podcast, and this one that you are listening to right now the losers bracket email us at the losers bracket at vvv gaming.com if you have any ideas suggestions anything of the sort you can also send us a tweet over on twitter our twitter name is simply losers bracket we look forward to seeing you back here next week remember if you do want to pick up tickets for mlg columbus next tuesday all right guys we'll see you soon you have a wonderful week <laughs> thanks for listening 